Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this response to the wonderful and very fall and autumn appropriate new tag by Don Michelle of Boho Taro, Hearth and Home Decks. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to do this. I haven't done a VR in a hot minute, it feels like anyways. And this one is so fun and is getting me right into my fall feels. You can tell I have this beautiful cloth to do this video on because I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed. These are my pine runes, in case you're curious, because I just, I'm obsessed with these too and they smell so good. Okay, I'm clearly squirrely already. So let's get into the video. If you haven't seen it yet, I will have a link to Don Michelle at Boho Tarot's original video in the description box down below. But she created a tag with all of these sort of autumny, fall, harvesty sort of prompts and different decks that sort of fit that category. And I am ready. I'm going to be talking about some really incredible decks today, some of which you've definitely seen before on my channel, some of which may surprise you. So let's get into it. The very first prompt here is Hearth and Home, the deck that feels like coming home. And for this prompt, I absolutely had to pick my tried and true Osho Zen Tarot. The funny thing about this deck, oh look, it matches the cloth so nicely. The funny thing about this deck is I actually don't reach for it very often, but if I'm like, if, if I'm having a day where like I'm in a crisis or I just, I need to go to tarot for a reading and I need to not have anything be in the way, like it needs to be efficient, like I need to just get the message. This is definitely the deck that I tend to go to because I know this deck forwards and backwards, backwards and forward. I know it like the palm of my hand. I'm so comfortable with the parables and the stories that I've told myself in my head about this deck. This, these, each one of these decks has I could probably write and write and write pages and pages about every single card because I've read, I've, I've experienced each of these cards in so many different situations, either for myself or for reading for friends and family. And so it has this very comfortable feel. It's comfortable because I know it so well. And that to me, when I think about a deck that's like, that feels like coming home, this of course has to be the one. And I'm super enjoying other people's VRs and responses and comments about this tag for the same reason, because it's always interesting to see what is our deck that feels like home. And for me, this is the one. It's almost not even like tarot to me in my head. That sounds really weird, but because I've, I, I know it so well, it's like, it's almost like its own thing. Like it exists kind of outside of the rest of my collection. It's just, it's almost hard for me to find words. In fact, when I'm trying to explain a, a situation or I'm reaching for a metaphor, a lot of times the metaphors that spring to mind are metaphors that come to me because of my experience working with this deck. So it's incredibly comfy and cozy for me. I know that's comfy cozy is a totally different prompt. I don't mean to confuse it, but like this is just a very comfortable deck that definitely feels very much like home base in a lot of ways. I think that if I were looking for a deck to begin with today, this would not at all be the one that I would choose. And through the context of the world that I live in today, there's things about this deck that I don't love, but it's it's home. I don't rave about this deck very much because I just honestly don't feel the need to go home all that often. I mean, I feel like I've got so many comfortable places I can hang out now within my collection that this one is not something that I feel like I need the way that I once did, but that doesn't make it any less home. Okay, I'm gonna stop babbling about that, but that, <clears throat> the Osho Zentero is a, um, just a piece of my tarot history. The next prompt is gather together the deck that reminds you of family and friends. And for this prompt, I chose my beloved This Might Hurt Tarot. A lot of you guys know that this is a favorite and has been a favorite ever since I got it in my hands. And I think the reason that this makes me think of family and friends or the people that I see as part of my world is because I feel like this deck represents the world that I live in today. Well, I will say that this deck runs a little bit, maybe less diverse as far as age is concerned. Outside of that, I feel like this feels very like real people, like the kind of people I would meet in my real day-to-day -day waking life. There's something really approachable about the way that this deck is done and the characters feel less per perfected. They feel more natural and they feel less forced. And I don't know how else to say it. Like these feel like, if, if somebody was making a deck, and I, I know that um, Isabella has a self-portrait in here in the Two of Pentacles, but in general, I feel like this deck was created with people that the creator knew in mind, almost. Like, 
because that's how realistically natural it feels to represent just a whole wide range of different kinds of people. We do have a little bit of age there. It, it felt like the first deck I ever used where it seemed to really truly represent the world that I live in. Um, and I love this card so much. Um, there's just a, there's just a ton of stuff I like in it. I can see myself really having a conversation with n any of these characters, and I think that makes it really special. So yeah, I go to this a lot. I use this a lot for client readings, and I would say as far as like family and friends, this is definitely this is just a deck that feels relatable, and that's what I think of when I think of family and friends. The next prompt is Light Up Your Life, the deck that lights your way through the dark. And I could think of no other deck other than my Reclaim Oracle. Look at this adorable little emotional baggage patch that was sent by the sent to me by the creator. It's really it's really cute and Peggy sewed it onto this bag for me and it's just perfect in my mind. Um, the Reclaim Oracle is one of those decks that was an unexpected favorite. I when I saw this deck on Kickstarter, I was like, nope, definitely not, not for me, because it's very monochromatic. Um, the only colors in this deck are black and this kind of like fleshy pink color, for lack of a better way to express it. I'm sure there's a better way to express it than that, but that's what jumped to mind. But this kind of like light pink. And when I saw that, I was like, oh no. And I didn't like the art style and I was like, no. But then I got in close on the Kickstarter campaign and I started looking at the actual images, what was being depicted and the keyword. And I found that it started to sort of take hold in me in a way. It started to illuminate so many of the things that I've struggled with over the years in my life. Now I come with a lot of baggage. Hello, hello, emotional baggage. And I feel like this deck saw me in a way that no other deck I've ever worked with has. It felt like it put in these, something about the quality of these images. It's almost like I don't even notice that it's monochromatic because the way these figures are drawn, the situations that each figure is in, the, the proportions of their body, the looks on their faces, the way that they're interacting with the world around them, it's so emotive. And so when I think of a deck that helps light the dark, that helps to illuminate the shadow for me, because that's where I went in my head with it, right? This is the only deck that I could imagine that could do that. And it's so great to me because it's like, this is exactly the kind of deck that if you, if anybody works with a variety of decks, if that's a part of their practice already, I feel like a deck like this fills such a specific and special pocket in a grouping of decks to work with and serves such a unique purpose that it's like, I wish everybody had a deck like this, not whether or not it's this specific deck, right? But a deck that serves this purpose, that helps them to light the dark, that helps them to see the, the, the difficult things and like in a self-loving and affirming and validating kind of way, and then helps them to unpack it. And that's what this deck does for me. It, it literally helps me. I mean, look at this resentment card. It just, it helps to unpack the tough stuff. And that's something that I think is just really spectacular. And I think the deck that does this for each person might be, might be different, but I just find this one to be so effective. And so it, I gush about this deck because it's just had such an incredible impact on me. But this is one that if I were to suddenly tomorrow have to call my collection of, of tarot and Oracle and everything decks down to something a lot more, you know, normal, <laughs> this would make the cut hands down, even if I had to pick only five right? Because there's something about this that is so specifically unique. I just, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. It's so good. Anyway, I mean, look at, oh, absence. Okay. And the little guidebook that comes with this deck, by the way, is like so freaking fantastic. Now I do believe in later editions of this guidebook that this handwritten, these handwritten pages, like handwritten font or whatever was replaced with something maybe a little easier to read. But that's also something I actually have come to love about this deck or the version of it that I have. So yeah, I wouldn't change a single thing about this deck. Nothing about the production value, the size, the number of cards, the variety of cards. I literally have zero crit criticisms for this deck, which is incredibly rare. I love lots of things and I'm, I'm, I can be shockingly easy to please, but I also often can find something that, that I would change or that I would tweak if I could. And there's nothing in this deck that I've ever been able to think of that I would change. So pretty incredible. Anyways, this is the deck that lights the dark for me.
The next category is rainy day, the deck that you want to curl up with on a rainy day. And I could not think of any other deck when I was thinking about which ones I'd choose for these prompts. And I think it's important to remember too that when, when doing a VR like this or when I'm answering prompts, I often think of more recent decks in my collection. That's pretty normal for me. Um, but when I was thinking of the deck that I'd want to curl up with on a rainy day, it's the Gentle Tarot. Now, part of my criteria for thinking about this prompt was thinking about the kind of deck that I'd want to curl up with its little guidebook, do readings for myself, maybe do some journaling. Like, which deck do I feel like I'd want to sink into kind of slowly and would feel really cozy and comfortable? Okay, all of these decks to some degree or another feel pretty cozy and comfortable. So I think that's part of the nature of the tag as a whole. But this just, there's something about this deck that feels very nurturing, very homey. It feels gentle. It feels slow. And I, it's kind of funny because when I first, this is another one where when I first saw it on Kickstarter, I was like, it's just an animal deck. It's just a nature deck, whatever, no big deal. But it's hard to describe until you get it in your hands and you actually work with it. If you do readings and work with the guidebook and like get to know it, you start to realize it has this like slow, gentle voice and this, this kind of encouragement. And by the way, this and Reclaim work really beautifully together in my practice anyway. But it's got this kind of, I'm going to hold your hand and we're going to learn this stuff together kind of feel about it. Like, like the kind of friend who would be truthful to you, but do it in a way that made you feel really seen and validated and heard, much like the Reclaim. But when I think about a deck I want to curl up with, like this is the one. And I think that's why I recently ended up springing for the uh, new Kickstarter where you can get a pocket version of this deck. But then she's, Mari is also working on a big guidebook. And I was like, yes, because I love the guidebook that came with this deck. Like I love it so much. You get like this nice little page per card, but the way that Mari writes, it's just really loving and encouraging and hopeful, but again, not dishonest, not, it doesn't like coddle you, but it also is gentle with you. And I just, I don't know how else to describe it, but it's really an absolute delight to work with this book. So I'm just really excited to see what Mari puts together in a bigger companion book for this deck but I love it exactly as it is. It was like a real toss up. Do I need another one? Because I love this copy so much, but I just couldn't not. So really excited about that. But I love this. I love it, love it, love it. So anyways, enough about the Gentle Tarot, but that is definitely the deck that I feel like I would want to curl up with on a stormy rainy day. The next category is Harvest Nights, the deck that evokes harvest vibes or bonfire nights. When I was thinking about this, the first thing that came to mind was like literally sitting around a campfire camping. <laughs> I don't camp, guys. I'm like a glamper, okay? But still, that's what it made me think of. And it made me think of like conversation and storytelling. And so I was really feeling drawn to like decks that felt like story to me, but also that felt connected to nature. I don't, that was kind of where I went with it in my mind. And so the deck that jumped out at me for this tag is the Oak, Ash, and Thorn deck. Got some extra cards here on the top that I'll just set aside. But the Oak, Ash, and Thorn deck is, is a deck to me that feels like, I think it's partly the color palette. I think it's partly how naturey and beautiful it is. But there's this like warm tone throughout the pal throughout the deck. There's cool tones through the, the swords and stuff. But it's just got this kind of storybook feel. And I think a lot of that is the quality of Adam Oler's artwork. But I think some of it too is the the vibe of this deck, the feel of this deck, being so connected to nature and the outdoors. And it feels like story. It feels like fable. It feels like, um, what is the term? Not fable. <clears throat> Maybe it is fable. The ones that have like um, mor morals to the story, right? There's something so incredible about this deck. Um, also, it was pointed out to me during our Helping You Say Yes to the Deck series that a lot of these animals, at least the bunnies, they all have like little hearts in their fur. I don't know if the other animals do. Yeah, because look, there's some squirrels, little heart on the bum, which I think is such a great little feature of this deck. There's another little heart on a bum. Oh, sorry. I'm facing it towards me, not towards you. There you go. Right there. But yeah, this deck feels, like, look at this like rainy day. This just feels like you're immersed in this world, in this way of looking at the out of doors and nature. Yep, there's a little heart on the bum of the fox. Love that. Pretty awesome, I think. Um, and I just, this is what that made me feel, feel like. It just feels like the kind of thing that you would talk stories about late at night. And I think that's pretty cool. But that is the Oak, Ash, and Thorn Tarot. And that is the deck that 
um, fits the Harvest Nights category for me. The next category is Handmade with Love, the deck that feels like a homespun gift. This one sprung immediately to mind. There are other decks in my collection that would that feel like this to me. They feel kind of handmade, but this one I think is really special and it just sprung immediately to mind again, probably because I've been working with it recently, but this is the Enchanted Tarot and this is the 25th anniversary edition, which I, I, I don't know. I had kind of a tricky time getting a hold of my copy of this, so I don't know if it's becoming out of print or if it's just hard to get right now, but um, this deck, if you don't already know, is made up of all of this beautiful like fabric collage. And so it does feel very handmade and, and rustic. This feels like the kind of thing that was absolutely a labor of love that, but it's so full of meaning and it's so rich. And I love the textures and the fact that it feels like fabric. There are other decks I have that have texture. My Curious Oracle has, or no, not Curious Oracle. Yeah, my Curious Oracle has this kind of like paper layered collage look to it. And the textured tarot has some of this sort of fabric feel. But this one has the most of that sort of homespun, handmade kind of feel. And I love that about this deck. It's just really, really lovely. The size also makes it feel kind of special to work with. And I don't know, it's got this very like classical beautiful, again, kind of slow vibe to it. I've noticed that actually about all of these decks. None of them feel kind of fast and loose. They all feel like they've got a bit of slowness to them with maybe the exception of the This Might Hurt Tarot. Everything else kind of has this like slow, comfortable energy about it. And this definitely is no exception. But the Enchanted Tarot, this is by Amy Zerner and Monty Farber, and it is gorgeous. The next category is Thankful, Grateful, Blessed, the deck that helps you appreciate the good times. Now, I don't have a lot of decks in my collection that just focus on the positive, but this one I would say pretty much fits the bill. And I know that Thankful, Grateful, Blessed isn't necessarily only about noticing the positive or, or paying attention to the positive, but I definitely feel like this deck is the kind of deck that does kind of hold your hand and coddle you a little bit when you need to be coddled. I don't know why I'm now zooming in. Let's just leave it. Um, the, this is the, sorry, I should tell you what it is. This is the Guardian Angel Tarot. This was a Dorian Virtue deck. The copy that I have has Radley Valentine's name on it. Um, this is a deck that I, by all rights, should have been really turned off by, but it just, I've modified this deck pretty much exactly the same as Adam Michelle at Boho Tarot modified hers. It was my first really careful, measured modification. And I just, I love the way it turns out. It has such a gentle feeling to it. But this is the deck that if I just want a nice message before bedtime to focus on the positive, this is definitely the one that I feel like would do that. And it, it sort of helps me to lean into what's good in my life, which of course is the point of thankful thankfulness and gratitude. So as far as a deck that I feel like I could use, even if I just wanted to have a tarot pull for a gratitude practice, it would be this one. Because it just feels like it, it gives you a nice spin on everything. I just realized now <laughs> that actually another deck for this would be, um, that would work really well in this category would be the Happy Tarot because it's little guidebook is literally like, I can be happy about this because it, like it lets you kind of puts a, a positive, positive spin on everything should you want that or need that. And, but, but this is kind of my OG. This is like the deck I like to think of as a bedtime deck. It's like the perfect thing to put by your nightstand and pull a card before you go to sleep. And I've used it in that way a lot, like a lot, a lot, but this really, really fits the bill for that. And of course the cards do a really good job with their little messages. I thought there was a divider in here. No, the cards do a really good job of that, but also the guidebook is similarly really gentle and loving. And it just helps to, again, really kind of come back to a positive spin to each tarot card, which can be really nice. And the last category is Comfy Cozy, the deck that is always there for you. And of course for that, I have my first edition Mons Tarot in the special custom box that Dustin made me. I have another copy of this deck, actually. This is an Atlantisite crystal, for those of you who are curious about this green purple wonder. Um, I have another copy of this deck, the second edition that is kept in a why do I have some cards sitting on top of the book? I don't know. Um, I have another copy of this deck, the second edition, that is in a bag that Peggy specially embroidered me 
for this deck. So I actually have two really super specialized custom homes for both copies of this deck that I have. Now this copy I reserve for my use only for myself. Um, and the other copy I will pull out and read for other people or in other situations. But this one is like the one that lives in a completely different spot than the rest of my tarot decks. This is the deck that sees me that sees me and understands me and gets me. The deck who has made me a part of its world rather than just kind of inviting me to be a guest in its world. It's like when I visit the Mons Tarot, I'm visiting these characters on their turf and it feels just as much like my turf, if that makes any sense. Again, I do personify my decks to some degree, but this one was one of those decks that when I first held it in my hands and looked at it up close, I every single card just sparked something really special inside of me. And I just, there's nothing that has ever quite compared. Even other work by Joanna Nelson. I love this card and I actually have a, a special limited edition metal version of this card in front of me on my reading table that just stands up. Um, I love the message of self-worth that this card carries, but it just, it's just a stunning, stunning, quirky, fun, playful deck. This is just, it feels like me in cards. <laughs> And yet the funny thing is, is that prior to this deck, I would have never said that I identify or am even drawn to cute monsters. That's not something that would have occurred to me as something that was my aesthetic, um, but it is so fantastic. And it's just, it's special. It's special. I don't know how else to explain it. And I'm really excited because at the time I'm filming this, I know that Joanna Nelson is working on a um, Oracle deck that would, would pair really beautifully with this deck or with the, um, Whispering Spirits tarot as well. So I'm really excited. It has a lot of these kinds of characters in it and I'm just, I'm super stoked. So that's gonna be coming out at some point. And I've also, there is a pocket edition of the Mons Tarot that is in progress or about to be available or sold or kickstarted or something. But that's great because this deck is a little bit big for shuffling. Like I manage fine, but I have big hands. Um, and you can, of course, side shuffle this deck really easily. But I love this cardstock. I love the way it feels. This cardstock actually feels slightly different to me than the second edition, but it could be that this deck's just more worn in. I think the second edition is a little more matte um, than this first edition, but I just, I just love this. And I have contemplated, and I may do it with the second edition, but I've contemplated just tight chopping off the, the title cards. Um, and having a completely borderless version of this deck with no titles. I've really thought about that, but I don't think I can bring myself to do that with the first edition. So I may do that with my second edition and just play around and see what I think. Anyway, I'm babbling, but this is my Mons Tarot. And this is of course the deck that is always there for me. It's, it's literally my comfort deck. Um, so this lives on a special, in a special, special place. It has a special crystal that stays in the box with it at all times. And that is my Mons Tarot first edition. So that, my friends, is my response to Boho Tarot's prompt hearth and home decks. This was a lot of fun to do. Thank you, Dawn, for creating this tag. I'm so excited to share this video with you guys because like this was a lot of fun and I love fall vibes. I'm so in it this year. I was so ready for fall and we've already had a couple really beautifully like heavy rain nights and I am living for it. So this has been awesome. Thank you again so much to Boho Tarot for creating the tag. Thank you guys for watching it. Do remember to click the like button if you enjoyed this video or you found value in it subscribe if you're new here and don't forget to click the little notification bell so you're notified of all my future videos and live streams. Thank you all again so so much and may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye guys!